Question. Have you noticed how political leaders have become far worse now than most people ever thought possible when it comes to their hatred for their opponents? Have you also noticed how many road rage incidents there have been out there lately? And some actually ending in murder? Have you also noticed how some teachers are attacking the children to the point some are being arrested for assault? Or what of the students themselves wherein bullying has become far worse than it was way back in my day? And now some of the kids are actually shooting up the schools. Or what about how husbands and wives have become so angry and hateful towards each other that in many cases it ends up in a murder-suicide? And the divorce rate, it's gotten far worse than anyone could have imagined. And yes, even some leaders in the church have become exceptionally angry towards anyone in their flock or outside the church that out of love for them points them to a Bible verse that says the exact opposite of what their sermon says. It's pretty bad out there, don't you think? Now, for those of us that have been around a few decades, do you recall in the 1950s and 60s how preachers were warning people about the adverse effects upon the morals of our young people that listen to rock music? Or what about not too long after that, most preachers said that the violent TV shows and movies were going to literally destroy society. And then, a little later on, the preachers came forward to protest blood sports where men were beating each other in cage matches, and now women are doing it, and some actually die in the ring. Not too long after that, the preachers warned that the graphically violent video games would plant demonic seeds of hatred and violence into the minds of our children. And all along, these preachers from every generation have stated boldly, and still do to this day, about how porn would cause Christian morals to disappear in this Christian nation. And have you also noticed how every single one of these preachers in every generation was completely ignored. Yes, I'm sure everyone alive knows exactly what I'm talking about here. And so we know firsthand why we are where we are right now in society. But why is all this happening? Why did the Lord send those preachers to warn the people? And why were they mostly ignored? Well, it has to do with two simple prophecies. Number one. Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. And they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. And then number two, Revelation 16, 16. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Now, think about this. Have you ever been in the military? Or do you know of someone who has? If so, then you know all about how soldiers are trained to kill. If you're a Christian, and especially one that studies prophecy, then you know all about what's prophesied to happen at Armageddon. And as students of the Bible, we all know about the calling to be soldiers for Christ. Well, Satan also has his army. And so in order for Satan to have his troops ready to kill the obedient people of God, he needs to ready his troops, doesn't he? In the same way the military does, right? You're just not going to send a guy out and put a gun in his hand and say, hey, get to it. You got to train him. And that's where the prophecy of Amos comes in. For literally decades... Christians from all walks of life have not only stopped reading their Bibles, they have come to a place wherein they trust their apostate leaders to preach unto them smooth things, to calm their fears, so that when the plagues finally do begin, some of them are going to be so fearful because they finally realize that they were lied to. And they're going to seek to understand the Word of God in the hopes of getting salvation, which by this time is absolutely impossible as per the prophecy of Revelation 22.11, coming to fruition. Once the plagues begin, you're not getting saved if you're not saved, and you're not getting lost if you are saved. By this time, their faith has been so corrupted, and their minds have been so fevered by all the violent music, the movies, the sports, the video games, and even the porn, that Satan can and easily will move them to think it's right to pick up arms and surround the people of God to kill them. And it is then that plague seven will strike and all of them will die and remain dead all over this planet 
for what the many false prophets are calling the thousand years of peace? Well, yeah, it's going to be pretty peaceful with all those dead bodies. But they're going to be remaining laying there on the planet for those thousand years, awaiting their final judgment of damnation. It is during this time that Satan wanders among those dead bodies, contemplating his long prophesied demise at the end of that thousand years, just as Revelation 20 verse 3 declared he would. The anger, the hate, the love of many waxing cold, the wars and rumors of wars, the natural and man-made disasters, all of it declares Satan troops are just about ready to do as prophecy declared that they would do long ago. And I praise God that this means the obedient Christians who are soon to stand in that long prophesied number are soon to be ready to do as they are prophesied to do when that time finally comes upon us. It is now up to you as to whose camp you will choose to stand in, the one that guarantees eternal death or the one that promises eternal life. Thank you for watching. God bless.